All right, time for another draft to science, uh, draftphysics.com video presentation. All right, one comment uh, that's somewhere close to a subject. Apparently, what I wear is really important to people. <laughs> yeah, it's so much impor more important than physics. Oh, it's just so bad. It's just, you know, oh, God, the stench of the rotting human mind. It just fills, it must fill the universe. That's, you know, the aliens are probably suffocating before they even get here, just smelling our our intellectual stench. Uh, shit. There are no aliens. Evolution is preposterously, um, <laughs> it can make preposterous things. Preposterously unlikely things are quite possible. Anyway, not probable, just possible. Legal distinction. God, everything is a subject. You know, a few years ago, the the, the law, <laughs> you know, in its in its wise judgment, the Supreme Court decided that uh, plausible, <laughs> okay, plausible will be the the new standard, not possible, just plausible, whatever the fuck that could mean. Anyway, <laughs> plausible. Plausible is so much different than possible. You know, when you really think about it, yeah, huge difference. Anyway, uh, yeah, you don't quite get what I was talking about. Well, that's why I tried to go start from the beginning and say, well, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, are we talking about the elemental function? And then we'd have to agree that in the elemental function, there is no such thing as I banged into it, it moved, and I stopped. That doesn't happen. The force doesn't stop, right? So the force has to have a way of keep going, and it can't hit something, make it go this way, and then it goes this way. That would be non-conservational. So I sort of tried to make the point that, yeah, you have to understand that the truth, okay, has to obey certain um, rules. And I'll go through some of those on, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, it shouldn't be that impossible to discuss, as long as you can accept premises. But nobody can accept any premises, so there's no conversation. All right, I guess comments aren't the best way of trying to quickly explain something. Well, nothing's good at quickly explaining anything, so quickly just doesn't work, unfortunately. That requires visualization and a ton of context. I don't know if it's a ton of context, but it requires context. It does require... First, let's agree on some axioms before we do this storytelling thing about what kind of stories are, you know, useful and what kind of stories aren't useful. <laughs> so, you know, blah, blah, blah. So probably not worth continuing this through comments. Um, I guess not. You know, you can't really draw a picture of it, then yeah, hell with it. All right. <clears throat> if you're still interested in a mechanical explanation for your rocket question, Yes, of course. Uh, I point out a paradox. It would be interesting if you have a, a, res a ro resolution, but you really don't. <laughs> okay, so, you know, this you're, you're being a bit pretentious. Yes, you know, like you, you've got it sitting here in this folder somewhere, and it works. It doesn't work. And for, so, <laughs> the question, and for useful work, eh, so again, you're going to use a concept that kiss can't mean anything. There's either work or there isn't. Either you're you're fighting a force, you're exchanging with a force, or you're not exchanging. There isn't any useful, not useful. That's just baby talk. It's all work. Um, from the perspective that we're arguing, the elemental perspective, something either is working or it's not working. That is, it's either um, exchanging... Uh, energy or not uh, and energy is just a differential in the condition it's not a it's, it's not a definition of something's actual energy energy is just what we call when there's imbalance and then you say kinetic energy concepts as if there's some way to resurrect the integrity of this freaking concept that has no integrity it has a horrible history it has no evidence on its side it's just junk um, blah 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 and you th you're saying you got it okay leave a reply well what am I gonna re reply with the link to this video <laughs> okay 
I guess I can try making an argument one more time. Like you've done so much work and you've extended yourself so much to sit there and make all these great explanations and blah, 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 blah. Sorry, I'm just taking this as being just... Oh, yeah, I, I explained it. it. You just didn't understand. Uh, yeah, right. All right. Um, so I thought we'd go back to levers and, you know, a way of understanding how this just can't make any sense to you people. I mean, I, you have to concede there's a, there's a logical disconnect in what these people are arguing. So I'm not really arguing conventional physics because conventional physics sort of just evades the subject. They really don't deal with the dichotomy created by having momentum and kinetic energy. They just evade paying any attention. So they don't try to explain how it's possible to have Newton's laws consistent with this differential in energy created or action. Um, you can't say equal and opposite action, equal and opposite reaction kind of jargon if the bullet has 2,000 joules and the gun only has four. They don't deal with that question. They just run away. Okay, <laughs> AB science won't explain it. You won't touch the subject. Okay, they just evade it. They'll just do their math. Um, and so the people who've attempted to rationalize it um, have come up with this 1.4 magic solution. You know, that uh, everything just doesn't seem to get its energy, uh, doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. So I sort of pointed out, I did a little bit on levers, but, I, I, you know, there's more you could say. Uh, and, you know, you can always put a spring on the lever and then try to explain how levers and springs could possibly be different because they really can't be. <laughs> and, and the point is, is, all right, so if I take a lever, you know, and... Um, you know, we would agree that, okay, if I put it, say, say this is the, the a point, okay, and I'm going to put a uh, 100 pounds on that point, then you know that there's 100 pounds of pressure, torque, distributed on the other side of the lever. So at this half point, the half this distance, this would be 200 pounds, right? I'd have to put 200 pounds to balance the lever if I put it here. All right, and if I'm down the equal distance, okay, then it's 100. And then if I go another half distance, you know, another twice this distance to here, it's 50 pounds. Okay, <clears throat> and that's how a scale works. I mean, you know, you actually move weights and do exactly this thing to weigh something. So the lever does work as a scale. Um, I guess I could have made that bigger. Uh, yeah, she could do a lot of things, Gary. Um, <clears throat> all right, so the idea relating this to the rocket example is, you know, you could understand that inside the rocket we could just put a lever as the mechanism for creating the torque. And we could imagine, okay, that, um, you know, it's a very imbalanced lever in the sense we're going to have the explosion very short distance and we're going to put objects on the lever, um, you know, the very light one way out here, okay, so this is very small mass, very big velocity can be expected, and we're going to, we're going to have a really heavy mass on this side, okay, over here, all right, so it's going to be a big mass with a very small velocity, um, theoretically, okay, so this is going to be the two kilograms here, a thousand times the um, the point uh, zero one kilogram over here, you know, point zero point zero one kilogram over here. So it's a thousand times difference, and we expect a thousand times difference in the velocity. Um, <clears throat> now the point is, is when this event happens, their argument is. Okay, is that this is 2,000 joules going this way. Well, let's say 1,000, just so we don't exaggerate too much. Um, and that um, we're only going to have one joule going the other way. So this object that, go, that will be going this way. I guess I shouldn't put that arrow there. Um, the two kilograms will go you know, one mile an hour. And this one's going to go 1,000 miles an hour. Um, that um, 
this is the same energy equation. You've got one joule going this way and a thousand joules going that way. And somehow that is consistent with Newton's laws. No problem. It works. It's fine. It's not a, <laughs> you know, shouldn't bother anybody. Yeah, I should attempt to fix things a little bit. Um, all right, so my argument would be is if something's looking at a lever, right? If I, so if we just make it as simple as possible, you know, just let's make a fulcrum. Um, and let's just make it deliberately lopsided so we can see it easily. How would this side know? Like say I have a screen here, you know, so you can't see what's on this side. How would it know whether you have 100 pounds here or you have 50 pounds here? It, it, is it realistic to think that somehow the weight here, whether it's a spring or a person pushing or whatever, doesn't matter, could you really tell the difference? Is there any physical way you could tell the difference between 50 pounds here or 100 pounds here? Oh, I did it backwards. All right. Right? No, I did it right. Yeah, that's right. Um... <clears throat> So isn't, bo isn't both of those circumstances going to look like 100 pounds to this side, right? Both of these are going to look like 100 pounds. It's not going to know the difference. It's not going to be able to tell the difference and say, oh, I can only give this thing 1.4 of energies. <laughs> you know, I can only apply, uh, uh, you know, I, I can't get the same. I can't, when I push, I'm not going to be able to push this the equal the 50% the distance I'm not gonna if the 100 pounds was still here it wouldn't be able to go like like you could say they're all everybody would agree that if I set up the lever completely even that you know if I put 100 pounds of pressure here I'll get 100 pounds of pressure here going the opposite direction so they'll all agree that there's no 1.4 problem when I put an equal thing in I'll get an equal thing out and but they're somehow saying that somehow there's a mechanical reason that through this through this moving through this lever is some sort of information that'll tell this side oh he's only he's tricking you it's only a 50 pounds out here okay so you can only give it um you know 1.4 the velocity you can't give it the 2x velocity that its weight deserves and somehow it doesn't work and somehow the spring would know that and somehow if i put it if we use the spring and compress the spring to make the lever work that somehow the spring can get the information through the piece of lever okay and the lever will tell it somehow I can tell the difference there's 50 pounds out on the end of, of the stick and not 100 pounds where you know it's a, a balanced so there's no logic to defend any notion that this could work any other way than the 50 pounds is going to go twice as fast and the spring is going to do it, do it. So the spring is going to know it's not 1.4. It's supposed to produce, I can only produce 1.4 today. You know, that somehow it knows to lose half the energy. I mean, somehow it knows <laughs> to give it so much slower a velocity. I mean, it's missing the 0.6, right? I mean, it's a lot of <clears throat> the extra velocity. It goes faster than the, the 100 is... 0.4 faster it's missing the 0.6 so the amount that it's lost is higher than the amount that it gained over the other thing's velocity it's so short of what it should be doing um, so obviously there's no conservation of energy in this you can't make it make any sense as a theory so you know what theory are you defending V guy are you defending this 1.4 thing you know um, that regular physics doesn't really mention because, uh, you know, I don't know whether they, you know, if push came to shove with it that they'd start using it um, because they say nothing on the subject. They don't explain any of it. Uh, so, you know, so the rocket ship example, I'm just saying, obviously, if I have a little explosion here and I push the two kilograms with a high torque here and it goes slow, but it's a lot of mass. And the other side of the lever is going to do the small mass, you know, less torque, but higher velocity. And the two things are going to have the, the same joules. They're going to be able to affect the universe in the same way. The same, you know, one of them has more little bits, okay, moving slower. So it's going to take longer for it to impose its energy. So that's all we're really talking about, right? 
we're talking about the difference between okay a small number of mass units with a high velocity versus a large number with a slow velocity and what's the difference really well the difference is is this one can impose its energy in a very short amount of time where this one obviously needs an extended amount of time okay to get the energy into something it's it's you know it's slower in putting the energy in it can't it can't give anything the energy as fast it has to give it over a longer period of time and we all know that yeah okay the slower something happens the more able to deal with it you are the faster it happens the less able to deal with it you are especially when it comes to like balance issues or something something somebody throws something at you at a velocity and you have to catch it you have to deal with uh, the fact that it's greatly imbalanced you but if they throw it in little 50 you know in little five pound increments you know if they throw the 500 pounds at you with you know baseball size units you can deal with it but if they throw it at you all at once you can't and so the argument is 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 that simple that the only thing is is from a human perception it matters that something happens fast that you have to deal with it fast and, you know, it's like taking a test. The more time they give you to do the test, the more better you're going to do on the test, right? Which never made any sense to me that they always, you know, have a stopwatch going and say, well, get the right answer uh, in a certain amount of time. That seems like a whole different kind of contest. You know, you could almost compare it to Olympic events or something. Where, well, give me time, you know, to do it right. I mean, you can think of any sport. I mean, the more time you spend analyzing it and studying it and figuring it out before you do it, you know, the more you search for the perfect comfort, um, you know, the more likely it is you have the better result. And so, I mean, the more time we're given to do something, the better able to deal with it we are and the less able. So I'm just saying it, that's the illusion. That's all it is. So it's only because this energy happens fast from our perspective i mean at a nuclear level it probably doesn't matter much to the little bits uh, you know but it certainly matters to us um you know how fast something happens and um because our reactions are so slow uh by comparison to the nuclear bits and so that's it that's the the only intuitive justification for sitting there playing a game about uh you know calling um you know saying saying there's you know such a thing as useful work or uh, more powerful force or some other kind of thing is yeah it's an illusion and then you could do this argument for the pounds per square inch um well i've sort of covered it before but you know it's worth going into a little bit again you know why things look the way they look so you can just relate this to the you know the speeding bullet example and the two kilogram example and what makes them different. Ooh, that's very wet. No. All right. Give me an excuse to, uh, <laughs> yeah, give me an excuse to, uh, yeah, do, I, I really can't just snack or something, but I can do something. All right, so we have a couple of minutes for a break. Yeah, yeah so why not? <laughs> it's just a free country. I'm allowed to take a break. Uh, anyway, I'll be back shortly. See, from your perspective, it's going to be very, very short. From my perspective, yeah, lots of time. All right, close enough. Uh, dry enough. Uh, anyway, all right, so um, the little bullet, you know, versus the big giant, and I can't even make it big enough, you know, two kilogram thing or something hitting you and the difference is is the bullet will interact okay in you know a tiny amount of time so it's like it's you know this much time and this for this to interact it's going to be interacting over a very extended period of time so it's like snapping the piece of wood right the karate guy the, if they go fast they use less energy to break the piece of wood the slower they go, the more energy they have to use because they're distributing it over time and they're not stressing the wood. The energy is being able to be transferred 
without breaking the wood because it's going in slowly. It's taking its time. And um, so the fibers can deal with it. The, you know, the energy doesn't burn them, so to speak. It doesn't cause them to be un incapable of reacting. So it's, the, it's like you're pushing an electron out of an atom. You have to push it out of the atom at a certain speed, okay, or it just kind of floats back in and goes back into its old position again. The, the magnetic pull pulls it back in again. But if you get it, pump it out fast enough, then it's free. And it's a completely different universe than when it stays and when it gets free. And so we're just talking about the kicking speed, so to speak, or the breaking speed. <clears throat> and that's you know, the advantage the bullet has. But it's really only it's hitting a tiny surface area, you know, and it's doing it all at once in one little area, one big bang. And this is just the same bang. It's just spread over more time and more surface. And so you have this illusion that this has less energy. But it's just an illusion. The physics is, you know, it's the same energy. Okay, this going one mile per hour. All right, a thousand times slower. Okay, but a thousand times more mass. All right, it's, it's the same energy as this. It's just going to be distributed in a different way, and how you distribute the energy has a lot to do with the, you know, how much, how many pieces of wood are snapped. Here, no wood is snapped. Okay, everything just sort of bends a little bit and twists and blah blah blah, but everything goes back to its position, and everything's, you know, normal. Uh, nothing's radically changed, but here, all kinds of things are broken and things are moving, and it just keeps, you know, blah blah blah. I mean, I really shouldn't have to persistently have to argue these kinds of arguments. I mean, they should be something everybody, oh yeah, everybody can sort of get that concept. Um, yeah. But there's no point in talking about useful work versus unuseful work and blah, blah, you know. It's just a transfer of energy. And the argument is, is the slow thing has just as much ability to transfer movement into the universe. It's just going to transfer it in smaller, slower increments, in smaller pieces. And in some cases, that means the energy will stay contained. Where if you do it in a small number of pieces with a high velocity, the energy won't be contained. Um, you know, but it also is a small distribution area. And so you're not going to affect a lot of atoms. But the ones you do affect, you're going to affect dramatically. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I shouldn't have to argue any further than that. So anyway, um, it continues to be rather uh, stark in terms of any kind of rational responses. Anything, uh, you know, no links to any good physics on the subject. Any great explanations of kinetic energy theory. Any, any uh, great experiments demonstrating the collection of kinetic energy, not, nothing. So there's been no, no reasoned response. Um, and um, the best they got is um, they don't like some of my wardrobe choices. So anyway, so we'll call it a video because there's just nothing here. There's no counter argument in any kind of reasonable form. <laughs> so, um, default conclusion is I win. <laughs> yeah, and it's just a matter of persuasion. It's just a matter of waiting for people to admit the truth. Um, but it's been established, um, you know, logically. Uh, and they haven't pointed out how any of the statements are fundamentally incorrect. So, that's where we are. So, till the next time, I guess if there continues to be nothing on this subject, I will go back to some of the other subjects and um, blah, blah, blah. And we'll see about experiments. Um, I'm still reluctant to be, you know, to force myself <laughs> to do with them. But we'll see what it has to be. Um, yeah. 
good news is, is the longer I procrastinate, the more I think about the experiment, the more I think about how to do it simpler and simpler. So that part's good. All right. So anyway, until the next time and such. Volume 100%. I don't know why that's there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's nice that it's telling me, but yeah. It seems, come on. That's funny. Oh, now it goes away. Okay, you try to catch it, then it runs away. All right. So, um, as you probably are aware, this has been a draft to science, draftphysics.com video presentation. Thank you for your attention and such. I guess. Mostly. Well, partially.